All right, you should have just finished watching videos about solving rational equations that were set up as proportions, where you had one fraction equal to another fraction. Now, what we saw previously is that if you have two fractions that are equal and you have the same denominator, then you can equate their numerators. And that's what we're gonna be using in order to solve a lot of these uh, following equations. So even something complicated like this, um, this is not a proportion. You might say, oh, you've got a fraction equal to a fraction. Well, what about this guy? See, that's part of the problem. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to factor all of these denominators, and we're going to make sure we have the same denominator at the very end. And we're going to do that by putting in the missing factors. For example, uh, you can't factor these two guys, but this guy you can factor. And he factors as x plus 5 times x minus 2. And so when you look at this, you're going to go piece by piece and identify what is missing for each fraction. So if I look at this denominator, x plus 5, what factor does everybody else have that he doesn't have? Well, this guy has x plus 5, but he also has x minus 2, and he has x minus 2. So this denominator is missing the factor x minus 2. So I'm going to use a different color here to indicate what's missing. If I just put the factor of x minus 2 in the denominator, it totally changes the problem, and it changes that fraction. So the way that we can correct for this is to put that same factor in the numerator like that. So now we've multiplied times x minus 2 over x minus 2, which is essentially just 1. And you can multiply times 1 all day long, and it doesn't change anything. Now here, this middle guy, x minus 2 is missing a factor that the others have. And that's the factor x plus 5. And again, you have to make sure that you put that in the numerator. So we can see that everybody has the exact same factors comprising their denominators. So we can now rewrite our equation based strictly on those numerators. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to stay on the straight and narrow path. And I want you to rewrite this before you multiply. So 3 times x minus 2 plus 2 times x plus 5 is equal to, now notice over here there weren't any factors that were missing so I can just copy down that denominator 8x plus 17. Now in order for us to see what kind of equation we really have once the denominators are gone we've got to multiply everything out. So let's distribute Please make sure that you distribute correctly. If you need to um, draw your arrows, that way you make sure that everything gets distributed correctly, then please do so. Okay. So 3 times x is 3x. Three, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Positive 2 times x is plus 2x and then plus 10. And on the right side, again, it's just 8x plus 17. So I hope you guys can see that this is going to be a linear equation. We don't have any powers. It's just x, right? x to the first, if you want to be that way. So let's combine like terms and see what we have. So 3x plus 2x, we have 5x. Negative 6 plus 10 is positive 4. And again, the 8x plus 17 is just waiting to do something, right? All right, so this is linear. We're going to start moving terms around. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 5x on both sides so that I can have a positive coefficient for my variable term. You don't have to do it that way. In fact, you are more than welcome to move the 8x to the other side. Uh, I don't like to do that because that is going to guarantee that I have a negative. And if I can avoid a negative, I'm going to. All right. So I move my variables to the right. Constants need to go to the left. So subtract 17 and subtract 17. All right, so this gives me negative 13 is equal to 3x. We finish by dividing both sides of the equation by 3. So x is equal to negative 13 over 3. Now, I know that's an improper fraction, but that's it's simplified. I'm going to leave it that way. 
You know what? That is a very nasty have. I just want to box everything, right? Once you get X by itself, you just want to put a box around it. But we didn't check for restricted values. Were there any values that we were unable to have for a solution? Well, let's look at this. What would make x plus 5 equal 0? Well, if you imagine that you're setting this guy equal to 0 and solving it, you're going to see that negative 5 is a restricted value. And x minus 2 would become 0 when x is equal to positive 2. So these were the two values that we could never have as a solution. Well, we didn't see those guys as a solution. We saw x equals negative 13 over 3. So that's it. Now, let's see what happens when we have the denominators get even bigger and nastier.